What's happening, everybody? Happy Monday. It uh, This is the Flow Show, where we uh, set up my settings here. So pause, <laughs> pause with me for one second. Okay. I noticed that my screen froze there. Uh, I think I get like a, a some... Never mind. You don't need to know why. My screen froze. I'm back. Here we are. This is the Flow Show. What we do here is uh, me and Straza. By the way, that's my co-host, Steve Straza. Say hi, Steve. Hey. This is the show where Stratza actually gets to talk, uh, other than, uh, as opposed to that other show he's on in the mornings. Uh, we actually value his opinion here, so uh, he gets the floor a lot on this show. But, but I'm just going to set it up here. This is what we, this is what Stratza and I do, just about every day, right? We 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 go back and forth about different ideas. Uh, stratza has got some great uh, some ch charts he wants to look at. He and he throws them to me and says, "Hey, can we put an options trade on here?" And we go through the motions of how we select our strategy and 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 how we want to manage risk we do that every day but now we do it on the flow show so you guys can see how we make the sausage here at all-star charts see how we come up with ideas sometimes we get some great runs sometimes uh, sometimes we don't you know but when we're right we're really right and when we're wrong well we we just lose a little bit and that's the way trading should be uh does that, does that sound right straza yeah you know and it's nice i i appreciate you know, ha having the platform to share some ideas here uh, with you. And we we put on a lot of these trades, too. I mean, we talk about really the same stuff we'd be talking about off air. We just do it on camera. So this is one of the better shows. And I told you I'm excited for today. I, g I got good Monday morning energy Ooh. coming off a big weekend for my Yukon Huskies. Uh, and I'm excited about I, I think I got something good that you're going to like today. But b before we get into that real quick, um... Is is the source of your Monday energy? Is it um, all that green beer you had yesterday? Is that uh, is that what's uh, got you going? I did not participate in any of the uh, St. Patrick's Day shenanigans that were going on downtown, and they were. I heard them. We went out for sushi for lunch, uh, right off of Duval. So we saw some of some of the you know sushi on St. Patrick's Day. That that's just not a thing I'm I'm familiar with. But, that's how but I good on it. you. Good on you. What, what are you supposed to have? Um, corn beef? We had some corn beef and cabbage here at the house last yeah. night. It was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And then is it like shepherd's pie or no? Uh, some of the hardcore Irish do that. I've, I've never been a big fan of shepherd's pie, to be honest. But How hardcore is your Irishness? Uh, not, not very hardcore anymore. Uh, I mean, you know, back in my... Back in my boozing days, uh, it was always a big, uh, big weekend. But uh, now, I, you know, I'm a dad. I don't drink anymore. It's just, you know, I, I went on a hike yesterday. That was that was my big part of my day. It's probably the most fun boozing holiday. Maybe with oh yeah. When I lived July. in Chicago, man, uh, the St. Patrick's Day parades were always a lot of fun. Yeah, I, yeah. The city, the city's crazy too. So, but the city was just nuts uh, yesterday. Anyway. For sure. are you can we talk about stocks? You ready to get? Yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So you said, um, are we taking a victory lap? Yeah, we've we've been talking about a number of themes over the past, I don't know, couple weeks to a couple months. Energy has been one. We put on this trade in Valero, which has been very, very good. To Not us. only did we put that trade on Straza, but we actually talked about it in this flow show two weeks ago. So if you guys were watching us two weeks ago yeah. uh, and you jumped in this trade with us, hey, you're doing pretty well. This was some good sausage, but we there's losers too. So another theme that we were on, right? Keep it honest. I'm not just going to come on here and talk about winners. Biotech, just not working. We did yep. XBI, right? Yep, we got rolled out of that one pretty quick. The internals, uh, the internals for this group, we need more. Uh, not enough stocks beneath the surface supporting a breakout here uh, quite yet. China is another theme. You asked me about Alibaba. I'm in it. It's not working. Maybe it's the wrong vehicle. Why, why were you interested in that? You asked me last week, right? About Baba? Um, well, I mean, I have some exposure in China, but I did it via the, uh, the ETF, FXI. Um, but you know, having that type of exposure, I want to know how the big caps are doing. Yeah. Um, and obviously Alibaba is one of the, is one of the bigger names there in China. So I just wanted to know what's going on. I don't know if I want, if I was considering putting a trade on Alibaba, but I was just, you know, Hey, what does it look so, like? So you guys, the, the, correct me if I'm wrong. Right. But the, um, 
rationale behind the FX die long is we're coming off just, you know, uh, obvious support zone, nice bounce. Emerging markets are working. Why wouldn't China kind of join? Yeah, um, you know, we also are in C limited, you and I, and that's a, a play on, uh, you know, the satellite countries around Asia, around China uh, performing well. And, and so we thought, well, I mean, China's the big driver of that whole region. So if the satellites are doing well, then um, that, maybe that means there's something cooking in China, at yeah. least in the short term. And so that was kind of a big reason why we liked getting long the China large caps. All right. I don't, we don't need to do China today. Another theme <laughs> is materials. I've been talking about, I feel like every week on the uh, team meeting or analyst call, I'm like, we need to see the leaders lead in materials. And we're seeing the leaders start to lead. They have been in energy. We're seeing participation broaden in energy. I was talking about like on the morning show this morning, I feel better about my energy longs if materials are working. Right. So last week was a big one. Uh, this is copper futures. You have my chart up, Gene. Copper futures. This is on the daily. So the best single session since late 2022. Right. And then even on the weekly, um, the weekly performance, copper's biggest week since you got to go back to January of 23. Right. So these are kind of very, very short term momentum thrusts that we're seeing. We've been talking about gold, the breakout in gold, precious metals kind of starting to uh, work higher. Again, energy, wouldn't it make sense for now copper? And I think there's a bigger kind of opportunity there if we flip it now to the equity markets. This is the large cap uh, material sector spider. And I'll just throw up a line real quick. Ooh, New looks like it wants highs. to go. New all time highs on a weekly closing basis. So I think we're we're there. Uh, I don't think we've talked about materials on the flow show lately. If we did, I don't care. Uh, we'll talk about them again. But this is this is kind of the pond I think we should be fishing in this week. All right. Well, throw me some names. Um, they're they're not top of mind for me. Uh, the, the big names here yeah. in this space. We'll run through some of the big ones, some of the leaders, uh, and then one point I forgot. Look at this. I mean, this is the relative trend, Sean. Right? We talk about this kind of scoop and score failed breakdown. Um, Energy looked similar to this just a couple of weeks ago. This is uh, XLB relative to the S&P 500, made new all-time lows and now ripping higher. Uh, so I think maybe it's time for some leadership from materials. Let's look at some of the uh, charts here that come to mind. I'm long Nucor right now, not working as good as some of the others. But you know, when you zoom out, this is- Had kind a good of couple of days though. Yeah, I'm, I'm in new core as well and almost got stopped out last week. Uh, but we've had a nice little bounce back uh, on Friday following through today. So who knows? Look, you know, and it's. It's probably short term thinking me saying it's not working. This one probably catches some rotation uh, and starts to look more like the others. Right. So I I wouldn't uh, keep too tight of a stop. Oh, Reliance Steel. I want to come back to that one first. Southern Copper. This is the one that really stood out last week. I mean, look at this breakout, Sean. That weekly candle, twenty percent. Missed it, man. We were talking about that one before it made that big move. Absolutely blasted off here. Best week since twenty sixteen. Look at you, Southern Copper. And this is really we were talking about on the show today. This is kind of the bellwether. Like this is the largest copper, uh, copper miner or copper producer out there. So that's great for the entire space. Steel Dynamics, Sean. I like this. Very very one. new core ish. Yeah, I remember that one. We had a we had a uh, winning trade in that that we exited uh, this past Q4 in December, one that we were in for pretty much all year, and it just was dead money for us all year, and it finally worked and <laughs> right yeah. right near the end. Yeah, that makes sense. And then here's my favorite. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. First of all, when you zoom out, there's a lot to like about Reliance Steel, right? This thing just keeps grinding its way higher. So structural trend, very much intact and pointed up. When we drill in, this one is tight. Look at this. Uh, I, I like that. I do like that. So like, you know, a lot of materials names have been really, really sideways for years now. Uh, this one keeps kind of steadily moving higher out of these bases. The most recent one, just, you know, off of the, what, July, summer of last year's highs, 
We worked our way higher, got right back to that breakout level. And then this, you know, awesome breakaway gap into what's now over a month long coil, you know, so nice and tight. So you draw this a little uh, flaggy here. Looks great. And this breakout, I think, is just imminent, right? I mean, this is if if what we're talking about is right and, you know, we're getting this rotation into materials and copper's work and all that, this thing's going to go. Uh, it's coiled tightly. How would you play a pattern like this? Because there's a longer term uptrend and then there's a really, really nice super bullish short term pattern within the longer term uptrend. So from a time frame perspective, you could kind of do a number of things here. I think. I'm going to I'm going to split the difference on you there and I'm going to kind of play it medium term. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of like going into September options. We don't have too many uh, options expirations to choose from, unfortunately. Um, so is it the farther, enough? Sean, the farthest we can go out is December, but I, I don't want to go that far out. I'm thinking uh, because I see what you're seeing there and this, this action that we've been seeing in the last few, several weeks feels like it's a, it's a tightening coil. And if it, if it springs, it's going to spring quickly. Yeah. So I like looking at the September options. Because it's a high-priced stock, um, you know, if, if you wanted to, you could just buy the calls, but the calls are a little rich for me as far as how I can manage risk for my portfolio. So I would play this with a spread, and I'm looking at the uh, the September 350, 400 call spread. So that means you're buying the 350 calls, selling the 400s against it, you can okay. get into that spread right now for about 1050, give or take. You might have to work the order a little bit. The, the, the bid ask spread on these is a little, little wide, but that mo mostly is reflected on the fact that this is an expensive stock, right? Um, but I think you can get, uh, if you're patient, you can get filled uh, for certainly under 11 bucks. And if this thing rips, I mean, I got to believe it's going to, it can challenge 400 in short order if this thing follows through on this coil, yeah? I love this short term pattern, but just to be clear, like these high price stocks, this is why they're obnoxious. That's like a thousand dollar outlay for this. Yeah. Right? So if you buy, if you were to buy a one lot, so you buy one call of the, buy one 350 call and, and sell a 400 call, it's going to cost you about 1050 right now, which translates to a thousand dollars, $1,050 per yeah. one lot. So yeah. It's not for every account. If you're trading with a smaller account, that might be too much to risk. And I totally get that. Um, but for those of you who, who can shoulder a $1,000 risk or more, this is a great trade. And you know what? You don't have to do, you can, you can make it a tighter spread if you still want to participate in upside, but you, but you don't want to spend so much. Like you could uh, buy the 350s and sell the 370s yep. and it'll cost you half as much, about 550, but your upside is, is, is less, uh, right? So explain so just, the difference there. So if you buy the 350 call and sell the 370 call, you know what, actually, Gene, why don't you uh, flip to my chart here real quick. Let's, yeah. let's do a visual uh, exercise here. Um, so I'm gonna bring up the Analyze tab. Oops, hold on. I have to uh, do a uh, Analyze trade. Okay, so if you see here, this is, this is the uh, PNL structure of a bull call spread. So you're long the 350 calls here. This green or this uh, this blue line here shows you what the spread would be worth on expiration day. So in this case, it'd be September, right? So if if we're north of 350, this spread profits all the way up to 400, which is where our, our gains would be capped. And the most we could win on this spread, let's change this to a one lot. Let's make this uh, simple math here. Uh, da, da, da. So the say most we could win. Yeah. I'm sorry, what's that? So say this thing just you know roars to 400 whatever there's some sort of news you got to be out there because that trades over right uh, once you get north of 400 your your upside is capped the most you could possibly make is uh in this case it'd be just under four grand right you you, you invest a thousand dollars the most you can make is is just about four grand but you don't make any more than four grand above yep. fourth above, above the 400 strike right so once we get up to like say 430 you're just kind of holding and waiting for the thing to expire. Uh, this purple line shows you what your PL is today. As we get closer and closer to expiration, this purple line will start mimicking the blue line, which is the expiration day. Sorry if I'm getting super inside baseball here. But this is if you buy the 350 400 spread, which would cost you about $10.40. 
If we change that upside strike to a lower strike, let's say the 370. The reason okay. being because it makes it cheaper to put the trade on. Right. So this spread would cost you about 555 if you could see here on the bottom of my screen. Yep. And you'll still start gaining if we get above 350, but now you'll see that your gains reach their apex at the 370 strike. And in this case, the most you can make is about 1400 bucks. Yeah. So, so, so while this requires less capital, Sean, that that's it. It's it's a risk reward situation, right? So if you're if, if we're just going to assume here for simplicity sake that our risk is the capital that we're laying out to get into this trade and the reward is the max reward when it runs to 400 or in this case 370 you could go 4x on the on the uh 400s selling the 400s correct a thousand your max upside is about four thousand you can only go about 3x on this one so while yes it costs half as much really are capping yourselves a, a, a little bit there Correct. And I see a comment in uh, in the comment section there for Rachel. And Rachel's right. She says, talking about that big spread, if we were to sell the 400s, let's bring that back up again. She says, yeah, you can make 400 bucks or four grand, but that's only if you hold it all the way to expiration. And she's right. And in, in most cases in a trade like this, I won't hold it till expiration. I will look to exit once we get above 400. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, the sooner or, or the, the closer we are to the expiration date, the more I'll make on the trade. Like if this thing rips to 400 tomorrow, I'll make money, but I won't make a whole lot of money. Right. In yep. fact, I'll tell you exactly. Well, I can't tell you exactly how much I'll make, but uh, we're right now we're, we're we trading. We're at 320. We're, oh, we're trading right here. This is oh, let's change the price here. There we go. Why is this? Uh, this doesn't look right. Something's not looking right here. Uh, well, anyway, something's not right here on my chart. The point I want to make, though, is if this thing rips at 400 tomorrow, we'll make money, right? This is, this trade has a positive delta, meaning as the stock goes up, it will participate uh, with, with that move. We just won't make a whole lot. Maybe we'll make, you know, 500 bucks instead of four grand, right? That's a first class problem, right? I'm not going to complain about profits, but with these spreads, once you get above your short strike, then time becomes your friend, right? Because the theta decay in the options will start decaying away and the value of the spread will actually increase as you get closer and closer to expiration. But if I'm sitting up here, if this thing rips in our favor this week and it's trading at 430, I'm sitting on profits. I don't want to sit in this thing for another six months to, to eke out that last uh, little bit there. I'm just going to take the profit, move on yep. uh, and, and, and celebrate celebrate a win you know a win's a win right yeah well sometimes <laughs> it makes sense um if this was maybe had lower implied vol and was a lower price stock would you consider just going long calls i would yes if this I was a uh if this was a 32 dollars stock instead of yeah. a 320 dollars stock i would definitely buy calls because if you see here on my chart again gene if you're still showing my my screen Here's the implied volatility graph here at the bottom. Uh, and as you can see, we've been trending lower since October. We're not at the lowest levels of the year, but we're getting there and the trend is there, uh, which is no surprise, right? The stock had a big gap and then it's just basically consolidated for the last, what's that, four weeks? Four weeks or so? No surprise if volatility is coming in. Uh, but yeah, if this was a cheaper stock, I would just buy the calls. And look, if you have a larger account, Right. If you have a larger account uh, and you're, you can shoulder that type of risk and you wanted to just buy the 350 calls by themselves, it would cost you a little less than 14 bucks. Let's call it 1350. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's thirteen hundred dollars per contract that you'd be risking. If you have a, you know, a two hundred thousand dollar account or more, that Go could be totally it. fine. That's totally acceptable. Yep. Right. Um, this pattern, if you want, want to flip back to my chart real quick, Jim, before we wrap up. This pattern lends itself so well to just long calls, right? But the reason why this show is is so much fun is it's not just about the pattern. We're not we're not it's not we're not buying common here. The implied volatility has to be there, right? And in this case, it more or less is. But then also for a lot of people, the stock price. So lower price stocks, I think you can be a little bit more creative or more flexible with. But I love the breakaway gap into the little short term continuation. These are really my favorite patterns uh, for short-term trades. 
Yeah, I do like this setup a lot as well. Um, I will just say, and I we touched upon it a little bit going in, but this is a stock that you know doesn't have a whole lot of trading volume. Like today so far, it's only done 32,000 shares. Uh, there is a options market uh, that appears to be relatively liquid. It's not certainly not the, the uh, highest uh, uh, liquidity options that we trade, but there is open interest here. The bid ask spread, given the prices, the absolute prices of these options are pretty tight. You know, when you're looking at uh, an option with a bid that's bid $13 and offered $13.90, that's not that's not that bad, and and there's a good chance that you'll get filled at the mid price. You, my point is, is you may have to be patient working a fill here, but that's okay, right? I mean, I there's times, and, and I know you do this, Straza. You'll put a limit order out to buy a spread or an option, and sometimes you'll just let it sit all day, and sometimes you don't get it, and that sucks. But more often than not, patience pays. You know, this is these are September options, right? We have till September for this trade to play out for us. And considering that the stock has been consolidating for the last five weeks, I mean, the chances that we get into this thing right now and it rips today and we miss it are pretty low. So I'll put an order in to get into this trade. I'll let it sit. I'll work it. I'll be patient. Maybe hopefully I'll get filled by the end of the day. If I don't, maybe I keep working it tomorrow. We got time. Yep. And you always, you, you never want to chase, right? When when you're trying to do something like this, like, like I said, yeah, I'll leave the limits out for a while, but it's also because you do the risk reward equation in your mind. Think about where the stock could potentially go. Look at the PL calculator. And then you should have a level in your mind or, or a price that you're willing to pay and not above that, right? So that's your limit. You don't go above that. You don't chase right. because then that risk reward equation that looks so good, you're ruining. And consider this, Straza. The stock's currently trading at, uh, with a 322 handle, right? 322 and change. We're putting this trade on because we think that there's a good chance if this thing breaks out further and, and follows through that it's going to make a run to 400 or or beyond, right? Yep. So if it's trading at 322 and if we have to pay up to 325, 326 before we finally get in, yeah, that's higher from here. But in the grand scheme of things, we're playing for a move to 400, right? Yep. So it's, you know, don't obviously don't chase it if it's a trading at 350, 360. But you know, from here up to say 325, 326, 327, I don't hate any entries in that price range for this thing. Right, because the reward is is so juicy when you're trading these long calls. Absolutely. All right, hey, Reliance Steel, look at that. RS, we're getting in, we're, we, we like a September bull call spread, doing the 350 calls, selling the 400, and if you have a large account and you're comfortable with the bigger risks, Maybe just buying the 350 calls is the move for you. I might consider that myself, but I, I like to, I generally, me speaking, I, I like to trade in smaller units. So I like to keep my risk, uh, you know, I don't like to risk too much. So I'll probably do the spread. That's the way I like it. Uh, but nothing wrong with buying the calls if, uh, if, if that risk level is okay with you. You, you well, see what's going on here? We're, we're talking about commodity stocks more and more these past few weeks. Well, that's what's been working, right? Interesting. Yeah, it's information. Hey. Yeah. There's all, as Jim Cramer would say, there's always a bull market somewhere. In this case, it happens to be, uh, you know, materials and metals and commodities and cool stuff that uh, is very unsexy on the uh, the afternoon talk shows. Who needs AI when you got <laughs> steel? <laughs> That's right. All right, guys, this has been the Flow Show. Thanks for tuning in. He's Steve Straza. I'm Sean McLaughlin. We'll see you tomorrow on the morning show. Until then, take care. Bye, everybody.